The Nikon F4. Oh, yes. A bit like Calvin Harris. I've got love for you if you were born in the 80s. <laughs> the Nikon F4 was an icon of the 80s. It came out in 1988 and was Ooh. discontinued in 1997. Here's some fun facts about this camera. First up, it is a hybrid of design. We've got both the kind of classic dial, touch, tactile design of the earlier film cameras blended into this autofocus camera. Air 4 is pretty much a product of the 80s. Boomboxes, Walkmans, rollerblades. It introduced many Nikon photographers to the autofocus system as well as focus tracking and is compatible with pre-AI, AIS, AF and AFD type lenses. While it wasn't the first autofocus camera from Nikon, we had F501 and F3 AF before that, F4 was the first professional camera with autofocus functions in it. Other key features include a thousandth of a second shutter speed, very, very useful for those bright sunny days, DX film reading capability, as well as an ISO range of 6 to 6400, so you can pretty much use almost any film out there in this camera. Nikon F4 is also first professional camera with a modern matrix metering in it. So we have a sport metering and sensor weights that we had on all the cameras. We also have a matrix metering which will work with autofocus lenses as well as AI and AIS type lenses. Yes, now let's talk about lenses for a second. So as we said, it will work with pre-AI lenses thanks to the ability to move the little coupling lever out of the way you will only get stop down metering if you're using pre-AI lenses. However, it will fully work with AI, AIS, AF, AFD type lenses, and you can even mount more modern AFG type lenses with no aperture ring, with some caveats. First of all, you can't change the aperture since there is no ring at the back of the lens. And second of all, if your lens has vibration reduction, vibration reduction won't be supported. Now, when F4 first came out, the price was $2,000 and people had to wait for months to get their hands on it. Sound familiar? In terms of accessories, the F4 could change the prism, so you could put multiple heads, including high magnification finders and waist level finders. It does have a high eye point viewfinder as well, natively in the standard F4. Nikon F4 is also a first professional Nikon camera with a built-in motor drive. So now you have continuous high mode, which gives you four frames per second. In continuous low mode, it gives you 3.3 frames per second, and you also have continuous silent mode, which gives you 0.8 frames per second. The F4 was also compatible with multiple accessories. So we had the standard F4 with the MB20 standard battery pack, the MB21, which was a high-speed battery pack that would allow you the 5.7 frames per second. Then you had the MB21, which was an external regulator battery pack, would allow you to plug in an external power source and then the MB23, which would not only give you the faster frames per second, but would also allow you compatibility with the 250 film back and some of the additional data backs as well. It also allows you to change the back. So we had a multifunction back and a data back for this one. Yay. Yay. Tilly approves. Do you approve? What do you think of the camera, Tilly? Approved. Smells good. <laughs> and now we're going to show you how to load one. I got a feel. Oh, that's a start. Good, you came prepared. First of all, make sure you have batteries in your camera. Next up, we need a film. To open the back, you need to lift up this knob and also push this arrow at the same time to release it. Then the back pops open like that. Now we're going to take our film and we're very simply going to slot it into that space, pull the film leader out all the way to the red mark here, close the back, make sure the camera is on. If it's not on, you just need to push that button to unlock it and take a shot. We're ready to go. Don't forget to set the ISO on your film, or if your film is a DX type film, then to set DX on the ISO dial up here. Once you've finished your film and you're ready to wind back in, you need to push and twist two release buttons. So we've got R1 up here, positioned behind the shutter speed and exposure comp dial. There's a button on top here that you need to push at the same time as pulling that lever out. 
The other one is R2 over here behind your ISO dial. So again, push the button and pull that out. And once your film is fully rewound, you can open the back. You can open the back <laughs> and take your film out. So hopefully you've learned something new about such cameras Nikon F4. So tell us what you think in the comments below. Is that the camera for generations or not? Thank you very much for watching. Please give us a like and a subscribe. We will be doing more of these brief history of Nikon videos. So what camera would you like us to do next? Let us know. Compatibility with the 250 film back and some of the additional data. And away you go. <laughs> now, if you would just explain that bit. <laughs>